There's a lot of controversy around root canal treatment. It is a very emotive subject and both sides of the argument are very polarized. My name is Dr. Dirk Jacobson from dentaldecoded.com. I want to talk about the good, the bad and the ugly about root canals and why are they done in the first place. If a nerve of a tooth is infected or dying, there are only two options to deal with the situation, to remove the tooth or to do root canal treatment. Here's the good thing about root canals. They can save a tooth. They are done mainly to get rid of pain and to get rid of, of a chronic infection. If we can keep a tooth, we can avoid complicated, invasive and very expensive treatment for tooth replacement. So. What is considered a good root canal treatment or a successful root canal treatment? After root canal treatment, the infection should resolve and bone repair should be visible on the x-ray. So the characteristics of a successful root canal treatment are the absence of problems for the patient and the resolve of an infection on the x-ray showing bone repair. In real life though, it is impossible to sterilize the root of a tooth 100%. That's not possible. There will always be bacteria left. This is because the root of a tooth has twists and turns and sometimes inaccessible side canals. They cannot be cleaned 100% and they will always harbor some remaining bacteria. The fact that the bacteria are still remaining is not the point of discussion. Everyone accepts it. Dentistry accepts it. Every dentist will accept that there are bacteria remaining that can't be somehow be removed. The argument though is what harm do these bacteria do? The pro root canal side claims that if the x-ray shows bone repair and healing the immune system of the patient was capable of tackling the bacteria and all is good. But this is not always the case and now we are getting into the bad side of root canals. They can go wrong and they do go wrong. And a tooth has to be removed after even a root canal treatment. This is common. Mainly for two reasons. One, the tooth can fracture because after root canal work the tooth is structurally weakened. It's almost hollowed out. And if the tooth is not protected by a crown, it can fracture. Now this can be really disappointing as someone is going through the root canal procedure and then the tooth cracks and then it has to be removed. Very disappointing. The second main reason is that the original infection is not resolved. And the x-ray shows clear signs of pathology. This happens if the treatment was performed to poor standard or because the remaining bacteria that we talked about have overgrown into the bone, causing infection in the bone. The result is a lingering chronic infection that can possibly turn into a nasty abscess. And this is visible on an x-ray. We can see pathology of an unresolved infection on the x-ray. Now let's have a look what the opponents of root canal treatment have to say. They often represent the arguments very passionately and not even the cleanest x-ray and the best bone repair can convince them otherwise. So let's talk about the ugly side of root canals. The main argument is that the remaining bacteria can have a devastating effect on our overall health. The groundwork for this opposition against root canals was laid by Dr. Weston Price around 100 years ago. His research was then picked up by Dr. Manik, who wrote the book The Root Canal Kebab. Dr. Manik was in his active career actually a root canal specialist, an endodontist. After performing root canal treatment all of his professional life, he studied the research of Dr. Price and had a change of heart. In his opinion, even a so-called successful root canal is poisoning the body and causing bad overall health and serious diseases. 
The reasoning behind his thinking is based on the focal infection theory. It states that bacteria from a central focal infection, like from a tooth, from a root canal treated tooth, can invade the surrounding tissue, get into the bloodstream and settle on distant organs causing infection. Dr. Price performed many experiments to prove the point. For example, he removed an infected tooth from a woman who suffered from severe arthritis. Once the tooth was removed, the patient's arthritis improved dramatically. What he did then was he implanted the extracted tooth beneath the skin of a healthy rabbit and this poor rabbit developed crippling arthritis in only two days. So the rabbit took on the disease of the woman with the infected tooth, with the infected root canal tooth. He took his experiment much further. In similar cases he injected only parts of teeth or he ground down teeth into powder and injected the powder. He then grew cultures of the bacteria and injected the bacteria and it all came to the same result. The rabbit suffered from the same disease as the person the tooth got extracted from. But then he took it even further. He took a solution with the bacteria, separated the bacteria from the solution and just injected the solution which was bacteria free. And the rabbits got even sicker from that without the bacteria. And this proved that the toxins in the solution were worse than the bacteria itself. So it is the bacteria produced endotoxins that cause cancer, heart disease and degenerative diseases. This was the conclusion. Critics of Dr. Weston Price have doubts that his methods stand up to modern research. They claim that conditions for Dr. Price's experiments were poorly controlled, the tests were performed in non-sterile environments, and other researchers haven't been able to duplicate his results. And there are no peer-reviewed controlled studies that show a link between cancer, degenerative diseases and root canals. Now here's my approach. There is no an easy answer. Every tooth needs to be evaluated by its own merit. I'm very aware of the potential harmful effects of even the best root canal treatment. On the other hand, tooth loss can have dire consequences, functionally and cosmetically. If we want to replace a missing tooth with an implant or a bridge, it is not only very expensive and invasive, but it can also have negative repercussions. Because an implant or a bridge, they can go wrong too. And leaving the gap unattended and open, do nothing about it, can also have severe problems. The right decision is difficult to make and sometimes to pick the lesser of two evils is not that easy. For strategically very important teeth, I still consider to perform root canal treatment if the outcome of the treatment can be proven to be successful. If the x-ray shows resolving pathology and bone healing after root canal treatment, I consider this as a doable option rather than dealing with the unknown consequences of removing a tooth. As a patient, the most important factor is to find an experienced dentist or root canal specialist to do the work. A positive outcome requires excellent skill and expertise. Many failures are related to a poor execution of the work. Now I hope this has cleared up a few things and provided some food for thought. On my website dentaldecoded.com and on my YouTube channel I provide much more information on important dental issues. I also offer video consultations for clients who feel the need to discuss the personal dental issues from the comfort of their home. Thank you for watching.